think RE3 Remake was a dud? I'm gonna show you something that'll make you flip your lid. So let's go down. Yeah, Monster Hunter Rise also sold ridiculously well. Monster Hunter World, Resident Evils, yada, yada, yada. Oh, Capcom's ninth best-selling game of all time is Resident Evil 3 Remake, a game that is widely considered to be an absolute abomination. Keeps selling a million units every year after it comes out, outside of like the five something million units it sold when it came out. And it keeps selling a ton. But here's the crazy part is that that had a substantial impact. We heard the same thing that the guys that were making this was not internal Capcom. It wasn't, it was outsourced. They were also potentially making RE4 remake. Even though the game sold well, these guys got some pretty rough criticism from a lot of people. Long story short, they stopped it, and then RE4 got, de got development switched over to potentially Capcom internal. So RE2 remake team ended up making RE4, and it turned out great. But did they need to do that? Like, this was a very good selling game. If they were just focused on the money, no. They could have saved money, got these guys to do this relatively cheap, and just had it be done. And then they could have been a 7 out of 10, or an 8 out of 10, potentially. But no. Instead, they spent more money, got internal to do it. Now it's a 10 out of 10. Now it's arguably as good as the original, and potentially game of the year material. So that's one thing you have to give credit to Capcom for. This is why I kind of respect their artistic integrity. This game sold a shitload and it sucks. And they could have just kept on making Resident Evils like this, right? This Resident Evil 6 game, but they didn't do that. Made a ton of money, but they were almost like offended that people did not like it. So guess what they did? They reinvented Resident Evil. They completely started over. Let's just start from scratch and make Resident Evil a goddamn first person shooter game and go back to like small house in the woods type shit. Capcom usually does very well when they innovate. And that's the nice part about it. When they innovate, dude, it shows. <laughs> when they try to like, hey, we're gonna take a thing that people really like, let's completely reinvent it. Let's just start from scratch and do a new thing. Oh, it works out almost consistently. It's kind of crazy. Let's see what else is on here. Do we have the top 100, 11 to 30? DMC5 is now 7.2 at 11th place. Holy shit. Inching out SNES Street Fighter 2, but this is a tough metric because, you know, this is just the SNES version, one version of Street Fighter 2. Granted, Street Fighter 5 also ended up selling very well over time. It took a long time though. In fact, I think it took like over a year to two years for them to even reach 2 million. So just to compare that to Street Fighter 6, Street Fighter 6 sold 2 million in like a month and a half. You're surprised RE4 is the number two on that list. Believe it or not, RE4 on the GameCube when it first came out didn't sell super great. It sold good. It didn't sell really well until it came out on PS2. Sunbreak, interesting. Old school RE2. RE4 remake only out, you know, within six months of this and already number 15th best selling game on this, uh, on their entire library. Uh, Monster Hunter Freedom 3. This was back when Monster Hunter was like at its early peak. Generations Ultimate also did really good. This shit was keeping Capcom afloat for a very long time. SF2 Turbo, the remakes of, uh, the remasters of RE3. Now we're starting to teeter out a bit, right? The best selling single version of first iteration Street Fighter 4 was the PlayStation version at only 3.4. Dragon's Dogma did okay over time. DMC4 was for a long time the best selling DMC game. Good for DMC1 to actually sell this good. If this game had any other title than this in it, people would be fucking thrilled. But the problem is, is that it's called Devil May Cry. 30th Anniversary Collection sold crazy good. RE5 Remaster sold crazy good. Old school RE4 HD. Damn, DMC4 Special Edition sold that well. That's crazy. I think this was not like a full price game. It was either like 40 bucks or 30 bucks. I'm really surprised that sold that well. That was the one where they added like way down the line, like, like seven or eight years later, they were like, hey, we got an update to Devil May Cry 4. Excuse me? Dino Crisis 1 is down here. RE6, uh, Remaster, Ace Attorney, Okami. Oh, PS4 Okami sold that much. Damn. MVC3, PlayStation. Shout outs to Lost Planet 2. MVC Eyes on here. Damn. Outselling Onimusha. God damn, on PlayStation 2, really? I thought Onimusha was bigger on PS2. It's also nuts that MVCI eventually ended up selling more than 2.1 million copies. Street Fighter VI at the time had not crossed 2 million yet when they reported this. Super SF4. DuckTales did pretty well considering how cheap it was to make. Yeah, so check this out. The GameCube version of RE4, RE4 originally didn't even break 2 million units. Damn, Ultra Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 4 between all versions sold that. Damn, Street Fighter Cross Tech and all versions couldn't even crack 2 million. It's official, chat. 
Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite sold better than Street Fighter Cross Tekken over time. Uh, Mega Man 11 got near 2 million. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. And then the re-release of Marvel 3 also sold 1.6. Mega Man 2 at only 1.5. That was the nutty thing, right? For everybody that loves Mega Man, right? I get you. It was like the biggest thing ever on Nintendo, Super Nintendo and shit. The highest tracking Mega Man game in Capcom's top 100 sales is literally Mega Man 11 at 1.8 million units sold. So the next closest Mega Man game, this is wild to me because this game just felt like the biggest thing on Nintendo. Mega Man 2. 1.5. Arguably one of the biggest games on Nintendo. Granted, it's 1988, but still, this game felt so big in its time frame that it's insane. Rentals. Yeah, that's the big one. Rentals were very, very much affecting unit sales and shit. And then we got Legacy Collection. That's pretty good. MVC 2, boys! At the time, this was the best selling game on PlayStation 3 downloads and Xbox 360 Live Arcade. It literally like broke a million sales. It was a digital only game type shit, which was, which in the time of July, 2009 was very crazy. It actually sold that much. It was nuts. Now you can't even buy it. Hey, this feels good. Strider eventually got 1.4 million units. Old dead franchise that nobody cares about, right? For how small of a game this technically is, that's pretty decent. Wow. I'm shocked this sold that much because I completely forgot about it. Even the Bionic Commando game sold okay. OG Dragon's Dogma did not perform what they wanted. Yeah, I remember this being a disaster for Capcom because Dragon's Dogma was in development for like a decade or some shit. It was kind of a dud when it came out. I think it's because Skyrim came out before this and everyone was so laser focused on that. Yeah, the re-release sold better on PC and shit. Wow, this came out not that long ago. Capcom Arcade Stadium sold 1.3 million. That's actually fantastic. For once again, another collection of old ass Capcom games that you can easily get on emulation, million plus sold. OG DMC3, SF4 Arcade Edition, Ultimate Marvel 3. You know what's crazy about this one, Chet? Most games sell like a huge chunk at the start, right? And then it sort of teeters out and it has legs over time or it doesn't. You know what's wild about this? I'm gonna tell you a story. I remember finding about the NPD numbers for this month of November, 2011 to find how much Ultimate Marvel 3 sold. I was like, so it did what it do? Did like 100K, 200K, 300K? Like how much did it do? I think it did anywhere between 50 to 70K between all platforms. 50K, 50,000 to 70,000. It bombed. That was the beginning of the end. The game was amazing, right? And granted, the game launched with that little sales, but over time it really picked up. And most Capcom guys I knew at the time said, this game's got crazy legs. It still ended up selling years down the line. So it would still pick up 100K here and then 50K more here. And then over time, the word of mouth really helped out and it ended up being a decent selling game. But yes, there were several things that were building to the demise of Marvel versus Capcom, even back in Marvel 3. The re-release sold as good as this did again, which is pretty wild, right? that everybody just bought the game again. So 1.2 is considered a bomb that much. Considering how much the game cost to make, yeah. You have to understand what was their uh, expectations. That's, and that's the difference for, and most other companies, a million is godsend. Like a million for Guilty Gear Strive, godsend. Their expectation was probably 2 million units in the first year, and they didn't get it. The original Mega Man X, yeah. X Legacy Collection, Alpha 3, the PlayStation specific version of Alpha 3, Billion copies. I still like it that Mega Man shit is all over the place, but goddamn, do I miss Mega Man. An interesting look back. Where was uh, Dark Arisen? I'm kind of curious because that was like, you know, obviously the, the mega bomb. Yeah, there's a reason they're making another one. You know, if, if that game didn't do as good as it did on Steam and shit, and the follow-up didn't do as good as it did, they 100% would not be making Dragon's Dogma 2. It'll be interesting. I really hope Dragon's Dogma 2 does well. I like I like Itsuno. DD1 had some fun stuff, but it was obviously a compromised game. Aggressively unfun things in the first version of Dragon's Dogma 1.